presence. We honor your presence, our Father. Somebody honor his presence in this place. And Lord, we say one more time that all we want is for your name to be lifted high. That men may see you only and none of us. Holy Spirit, you are the one that we have come to introduce to your people this morning. Wherever people are joining this service from, from all over the world, we ask, let your presence pervade and permeate the atmosphere in every heart and in every life and in every family, in every space where people are right now engaging with this service. We ask that you move freely. We give you invitation. We give you permission to move in the midst of us today, that you charge your word with power and let it minister grace to every hearer. Let no one be the same again. Heal our hearts, heal our bodies. Give us new perspectives to the critical issues of our lives. Give someone an encounter with you today. We thank you, everlasting Father, and we bless your holy name. We thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, we are praying. Somebody say better amen. Uh, say better amen, somebody. Have you welcomed your neighbor to church this morning? Please go ahead and say hello to someone. Welcome to church to someone. Praise God. I said praise God. How was your week? I'm hearing some awesome, some great, and I prophesy in the name of Jesus that this new week will come with new blessings, that you will encounter God in all areas of life. Somebody, you are catching a new revelation this week. Somebody weeping may have endured for a night, but this week God is wiping your tears away. I don't know what situation of life you need God to wipe the tears away. I agree with you by faith this morning that God is wiping those tears away in the precious name of Jesus. Again, I want to welcome everyone joining us online from any part of the world, from our city in Lagos, from all over Nigeria and different countries. We want to welcome you very specially to this service. It's our first uh, service today, and we, we believe that uh, God will reach out to you wherever you are, uh, whether, whatever time you're joining us, uh, uh, where, where you are, even when you're going to get hold of this in subsequent services or later in the day, we believe that God will begin a good work in you, he will perfect it. So take distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed by the word of God. Praise God. I'm sharing this, uh, this time on what, what I've titled Mastering Emotions, Winning Beyond Feelings. Mastering Emotions, Winning Beyond Feelings. As we continue in the, in the series of teachings on, you know, Emerge, uh, or, 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 you know, just emphasizing the, 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 the theme for the year, this is a year where God has spoken to us that we're emerging out of obscurity, emerging out of familiarity, emerging, you know, out of being stuck in any area of life. I want you to release your faith on that word, believing that God who spoke to us, who does not lie, will really cause you to emerge out of something that has held you back. Uh, we, we've taught all kinds of messages through this series, and I, I, I want to ask you uh, to engage those messages uh, binge watch on YouTube, get the audio from our audio platform, download, listen to it in the car, listen to it, you know, on your phone. Let, let, let the word of God dwell in you richly. That's what the scripture says. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. I think that's Colossians 3 and verse 16. Let the word of God, the Christ, dwell in you richly. That's what you should position for this season. And I believe that this, this, this message also uh, will be a great addition to what you have already encountered. Uh, I mean, we're in the season of love and wherever love is in the atmosphere, what happens is that um, uh, people become more aware of their emotions. Yeah. People become more aware of their emotions. You know, la this time last week, we were talking about Valentine's tomorrow and all kinds of music, you know, around town and all that. People generally just become more aware of their emotions. Uh, and I'm taking advantage of that today uh, to speak a little bit to us gaining mastery of our emotions. One important thing that I want to start with is that emotions are important, but in many departments of life, if you only focus on emotions, you will miss what God is doing. So what we need to do is to master our emotions so that we can win beyond our feelings. Many times in life, God wants to reach out to you 
lay hold on you, set you apart for something new that is doing, but when you get hooked up on emotions, when you get hooked up on feelings, uh, you don't feel like doing certain things. You don't feel like going to certain places. You don't feel like believing God for certain things. But sometimes you need to go beyond your feelings. Sometimes my feelings make some things look too big. My feelings make some things look too difficult. My feelings make some things look out of reach. But if only I will allow God and settle with the Holy Spirit and allow him to uh, help me to master my emotions, I will really be able to win better in the affairs of life. Human feelings are real, but can take a toll on your emotional well-being and interpersonal relationships when outside of the influence of God. When you allow your feelings to be completely outside of the influence of God, what happens is that it starts to mess many things up. There are many departments of life where feelings are irrelevant. Irrelevant. As good as feelings are, in many departments of life, feelings are irrelevant. In love relationships, feelings are, 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 are to be embraced. Yeah, I need to be aware of my feelings and the feelings of my spouse. In, in a team, when I function in a team at work, for instance, uh, feelings are important. Yeah, feelings are important. Uh, when you are leading, sometimes feelings are important. You need to know how other people feel about certain decisions. Yeah, you need to manage the excluded. There's a concept called managing the excluded. When you make a decision and some people are excluded, they're, they're not going to benefit so well. You have to manage their feelings. That's good leadership. There's also the concept of situational leadership. Uh, where you, you need to understand individuals and how to, they interpret uh, the things that you are doing as a leader. So you manage them individually, that's situational leadership. Uh, but my approach to this person will be different from my approach to that person. When we get into that, all that uh, uh, you know, area, especially uh, as a leadership coach, I, I have studied a lot of those areas. Feelings are important in those areas. You, you know that you have to allow feelings to play in. And you must seek to understand how people feel. But when it gets to areas, for instance, of the law, policy, principles, feelings pave into insignificance. You can't break the traffic light and say it's because I don't feel like obeying it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I say I just don't feel like obeying the traffic light, so I just I broke it. Yeah, you will pay fine. And the fine will reset your feelings. Depending on the, whatever area of, I mean, of the world you are living in. Yeah, some people are watching from different parts of the world. When you pay such fines, it just resets your feelings. You tell yourself, this thing is not subjected to my feelings. When I see red, it's red. It's not yellow, and it's not green. Are you still with me today? I said, are you still with me today? Glory be to Jesus. This house is quiet this morning. I, I hope somebody... Is not expecting that I'm going to be brutal. No, no. Just come along with me. Come along with me. Tell your neighbor, say, come along with pastor. <laughs> Our reactions, you know, are the point of emotional extremes. Emotional, positive emotional extremes, negative emotional extremes may cause us to miss our destinies if care is not taken. Reactions based on emotional extremes can cause people to miss their destinies. I'll give you a few examples in the scriptures, and I'll get to read the scriptures. Just follow me. In Esther chapter 1, time will not permit me to get into it. It's a whole discussion about Queen Vashti. Her husband, the king, sent for her. Vashti was engaging too much, maybe a positive emotion. She felt she was the best in after sliced bread. She could not even respond to the king. <laughs> uh, the king's call is not subject to your emotion. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are under the rule of the king. Can I give you uh, uh, another side to that? In Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1, God appeared to Abraham. That's the king's call. God appeared to Abraham. He said, come out of your people, out of your kindred, and go to the place that I will show you. 
In verse 2, uh, uh, you know, verse 2 and 3, verse 3 says, and I will bless you, and I will do this and all that. I will bless you, and I will curse, curse those who curse you, and uh, you, know, you all the families of the heart shall be blessed. And in verse 4, the Bible says, so Abraham departed. It's the king's call, ladies and gentlemen. Abraham departed. That is not the department where emotions can hold sway. Yeah. It's, I mean, if you, if you don't live life, if you allow emotions to play where emotions are irrelevant, you will miss destiny. Vashti was dethroned because she, she put feelings and emotions where emotions don't work. The king's call demands urgent attention and urgent obedience. And at that point, emotions don't cut it. The Bible says in Genesis uh, uh, 12 and verse 4, and Abraham departed. If Abraham did not depart, I don't know what, what would have become of our faith today. He's the father of faith, and many people confess that they have faith today, but in such situations, they're playing around emotions. They're asking many emotional questions. You're allowing emotions to overshadow what's a divine moment, what's a divine instruction, what's a divine call, what's a divine idea. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. You have a right to how you feel. The only thing is, the level of control you have over your emotions determine your interpretation of pivotal experiences that you encounter. Feelings notwithstanding, there are pivotal experiences that you encounter and your interpretation is very important. As much as I have right over my emotions, I will encounter situations and circumstances in life where God is counting on me by the help of his spirit to make appropriate interpretation. If you've read the book of Esther that I mentioned before, you will know that if only Vashti will make some appropriate interpretation of that situation, she may have made the right decision if she won't allow her emotions to override and overshadow her. Abraham departed and went even when he did not know where God was sending him. Now, let's talk about emotional extremes and deprivation. Yeah, there are two people in the scriptures that I want to quickly analyze. I'm going to, we're going to read a few scriptures here. And I'm, 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 I'm analyzing this simply to get somebody to a point because I want you to leave this service thinking about yourself and reinterpreting the situations, the current situations and circumstances of your life right now, uh, especially the ones that you should interpret outside of feelings and emotions, so that you will win better this season. You see, when there's crisis in the world, we have to choose how we will live. I'm going to get into that in a bit. When there's crisis in the world, when, when there's vo volatility around, you have to choose whether you want to live by reaction or by revelation. There are two ways to live. You either live by reaction or you live by revelation, especially in the face of volatility and crisis. And our world is still in a bit of crisis, and the volatility has not gone. In fact, it, we're, we're going to have to live with it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not only talking about COVID and all the attendant implications of COVID. There are many things, many things. Divorce rates is going up. All kinds of things are happening in our world today. If you choose to live by reaction, those things will get hold of you emotionally, and most of your decisions will be based on circumstances. But if you choose to live by revelation, you will allow the Holy Spirit to guide your feelings, so that feelings notwithstanding, you become stable. May God bring stability into your life. I say it one more time. I say, may God bring stability into your life. So, in the book of Genesis 25, we read a story of a young man. In the book of Matthew chapter 4, we also read another story. I'm going to analyze the two stories. Let's start with Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1. The exemplary story of Christ experiencing an extreme emotion after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, Christ was about to launch his ministry, 
And the Bible says he was led into the wilderness and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, verse 1 of Matthew chapter 4, and uh, to be tempted by the devil. Look at verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. The implication of fasting for 40 days and 40 nights was submission to God, but it had a tendent implication on his feelings, his emotions. I hope you understand what I'm saying. When you experience deprivation, it makes you vulnerable to attack. It makes you weak. I've counseled too many people, married people, who say, so why do you cheat on your spouse? Because I was denied sex. So whether you are denied food for 40 days, or denied sex, or denied your salary, whatever you are denied of, there's a reaction that should come with it. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. I was denied of this, I was denied of that, so that's why I'm misbehaving. That's why I'm throwing tantrums. There are many uh, 50 year olds, 60 year olds, 45 year olds who behave like 15 or 18 or 17 when, when, when it's an emotional issue. I've had my own fair share. I've confessed many here before. In the early days of our marriage, I was behaving like a child. I threw a lot of tantrums. Yeah. You know, there was a story I told once where. <laughs> I think that, that happened in, I think, 2005 or so. Uh, that was just about uh, three years in marriage or so. Um, we were supposed to travel, and my wife and I had a disagreement. And my own emotion said, don't travel with somebody you're angry with. There's a better sense that anger is not a destination, it's a passing face. We can resolve it as we are going on the trip. Me, I said, except we resolve it, I'm not going. Yeah, we're supposed to travel out of the country the next day. And my wife was just like, she just went to bed and covered herself and was sleeping. I told the story before. Some of you, you will never be bored hearing this story. Because I'm ashamed of it, but it's very instructive. So I went and put on the CD player, put that the highest. I said, in this house today, nobody is going to sleep until we resolve this matter. My wife said, if you want to resolve, I said, if we're traveling tomorrow, when we get to where we are going, we'll sit down and maybe we can talk. I said, no, I will now sit on the same plane with you, beside you. Everybody will look at us, they will think we're happy. Uh, we'll fly from, <laughs> I think we're going to Canada. We'll fly from here to London, another half, eight hour flight to Toronto, and I will just, you know, I'd program myself to be like, you're going to be miserable all through this flight. I could have said, I can turn this thing around and just behave like, you know, and just enjoy my, we can even resolve it on the plane. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're supposed to fly early in the morning. The kind of tantrums I threw that night, even our neighbors knew, they heard the music. <laughs> and um, those are moments that you're ashamed of yourself and you tell yourself, you could behave better. I've matured now a bit more. <laughs> so as you're laughing at me, think about yourself. Yeah, just think about yourself a little bit more. Don't think about me. Me, I've moved on. <laughs> think about all the emotional displays. So for some people here, maybe you are still single, uh, but at work, they know you. Yeah. They know you're always carrying Christian literature and Bibles, but nobody can try you in that office. <laughs> you know, there are some people like that. You always see them, they pull something here, they're listening, amen, 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 as they are going, yeah. You're entering office, and you know all those early morning prayers, amen, amen, amen. And then you get to the same office, you put something on the table, hey, you, you, you come here. What's the meaning of that? <laughs> all sorts of emotional children of God who are supposed to be, who are supposed to be, you know, Spiritual juggernauts. Some people have been saved 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Grown spiritually, but weak emotionally. It's possible, ladies and gentlemen, to prophesy, to even speak and fire come out of your mouth and see get angry and slap your spouse. Yeah. You know, I coach a lot of pastors. We're dealing with our own issues. Yeah. So spirituality does not guarantee emotional balance. 
Many spiritual people are not balanced emotionally. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Now look at this. Jesus was deprived of food. The tempter came in, 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 in verse 3 there. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. At the point of emotional weakness, at the point of physical deprivation, whether of food, of sex, of mo or money, whatever you have been deprived of, you are at your low point emotionally. The devil will want to come for you. He does not have any other modus on parandi. We saw it in the scriptures. He will come for you. He came for Jesus here. But Jesus was centered and anchored. His response was very simple. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. When you get into that place where you're supposed to make an emotional display or make a, a stupid decision, what comes to mind? Are you centered? Are you anchored? Because we can, we can, we can, we can look at another situation, like I said, analyze it with that of Esau. Esau did not fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Genesis 25, when you read from verse 29, Esau only skipped one or two meals. He came back from the field. Genesis 25, give me verse 29 quickly. He came back from the field. The Bible says, now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field and was weary. Ladies and gentlemen, I will always have to pause here to say, beware of weariness. Many people are weary. Weary maritally, weary financially, weary career-wise. Don't go around in a state of weariness. The devil plays on it. Just weary of this marriage, you say to all of your friends. The devil is coming after you. Change your confession. God is your strength. Allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen you from within. Weary of this job. Be careful what you say. Some people don't have a job. Why don't you thank God for what you have? Maybe if you're celebrating more for that job, we'll give you a better one. Rather than wearing that cloak all around you of weariness. I'm weary of this job. That's how some people enter dead-end employment. You're weary of this job. You jump on another one, you don't know that they're about to declare bankruptcy. Yeah. I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Esau here was weary. The Bible says, verse 30, And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me. With that same red stew, for I'm weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Edom means red or red stew. He loved red stew. Be careful what you love. He loved red stew. They named him, they nicknamed him Edom. His name was actually Esau, but Edom. Edom, because of what he was eating too much. Verse 31. But Jacob said, Sell me your bad right as at this day. Write the check. Put the date of today on it. I want to cash it today. He said, Sell me your bad right as at this day. The guy was emotionally weak. It was highly susceptible to, you know, to all kinds of... Then, the tempter here happened to be Jacob. Took advantage of that. Esau said, look, I'm about to die. Who skips two meals or one meal and dies? Jesus fasted for 40 days. The devil came after him, but because he was anchored and stable emotionally, he couldn't fall. Forget about the fact that he was the son of God. The Bible says uh, we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. In the book of Hebrews, he said, for he was in all ways tempted, just as we are, and yet without sin. So he was man at the same time God. So you can't judge it based on the fact that he was, he was subjected to every feeling. The same feeling that Esau had here, Christ had it. The, what made a difference is emotional stability. When you go through the extremes of life, you need to tell yourself, I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to allow the devil to trash me here. Many people are going through extremes right now. Extremes financially, extremes in your marriage, extremes, you know, of emotions. Please don't give in to the devil. Don't give in to the devil. That's why this me message is coming to you today. Don't give in to the devil. The Bible says in verse 33, there, then Jacob said, swear to me as at this day. So he swore to him and sold his bat right. Many people are selling their bat right on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, all around the cities of the world. Listen to me today. It's time for you to become aware of the validity of your bat right. Verse 34, and Jacob 
gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank and arose and went his way. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. Many people are despising their birthright under feelings and emotions that are unfounded, feelings and emotions that are fleeting. Something that will come and go. Emotional stability is key to proper emergence and entrance into God's plan uh, for your coming season. Yeah. It's very key. Very key. Very key. Very key. Ephesians 4 and verse 26, the scripture says, Be angry, but sin not, and let not uh, the sun come down on your wrath. Be angry, but sin not. It means that uh, don't deny your emotions, but don't let it control you. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't get through the boundary. You know, uh, I, I'm angry, but I know what to do and what not to do. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to stay within the boundary where the grace of God can reach me. Be angry, but say not, and let not the sun come down on, on, on your wrath. Let not the sun come down on your wrath. Many Christians despise the absolutes of the scriptures. And that's why uh, a lot of the time we, 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 we fall into sin. Uh, we allow fear. We allow all kinds of things to come in. Paul, writing in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14, he said that we should no longer, Ephesians 4 and 14, New King James Version, he said that we should no longer be children. Can you hear me tell your neighbor, say, I'm no longer a child. I'm not a child emotionally. He said that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of the sinful plotting. That we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro. Many people still, you know, embrace, you know, childish emotions and real issues of life. Real issues of life. He said we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the trickery of men and cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. And many plottings are going on around us. Many ideas uh, that has been sponsored. And many people are falling for those ideas. Glory be to Jesus. And we need to always ask ourselves, rather than falling for just any idea, whose report will I believe concerning that situation? Am I choosing to believe the report of God's word because that's how we get centered? Or am I just going to find out to my opinion, my feelings, or, or preferences? It's very important. In Numbers 13, you, you, maybe you've read a story before. In Numbers 13, they sent 12 leaders of the different tribes of Israel to go and spy out the promised land. Only two demonstrated a level of emotional stability. The Bible says they had a different spirit, a can-do spirit, a level of stability that can make you see something out of nothing, that can make you see something from the standpoint of God's word, not the standpoint of what you see. That can make you see something, not from the emotion of fear that you feel as you are seeing them, but the word of God. Psalm 23 and verse 1, the, the psalmist says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It makes me to lie down with great pastors, you know, uh, and all that. Uh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Fear is an emotion. I can control its hold over my life. Many people are not emerging just because of fear. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I shall fear no evil. Psalm 23 is the psalm of David. The writer of Psalm 23 is not telling stories. He had walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Go to 1 Samuel 17 in the valley of Ella. That's the valley of shadow of death. You see Goliath coming. David, despite the height of Goliath, run towards Goliath. So when you read the psalm, Psalm 23, understand that he was not telling fables. That it's possible for you to be in the valley of shadow of death and fear no evil. You can be a fearless believer in the face of affliction and the things of life. That subject to how centered your emotion is. Glory be to Jesus. I said glory be to Jesus. So, I, I want to help someone today as I start to tie this message up to understand this from a framework and then I'll bring another framework to help us to say this is what we should do. But to understand it from a framework, I have a framework here which I call Individual Belief System Profile. It simply shows how we 
allow our emotions, or how do I put it, how we believe things, which is what eventually controls our emotions. Yeah. You know, I said it before, that you can either live by reaction or live by revelation. In many situations of life, many people choose to live by reaction. And reaction is the lowest level of living. Anybody can react. Children react. Yeah, anybody can react. But for somebody to respond based on revelation is very key to adulthood. So when you look at this, in life, just like we saw in the life of Jesus or Esau, I'm going to explain it. The absolutes was what Christ was dwelling on. What are the absolutes of a believer? It is written. It is written. The number one absolute of a believer in any issue of life is it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus was tempted for power, for influence. He took him to the pinnacle of the temple, jumped down, you know, and all that. The same thing, it is written. It is written. How much of the scriptures, whether you can quote it or not, do you have Lord in your spirit that keeps you centered? The psalmist says, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. That's what brings emotional stability. You are like a ship that is anchored. Anchored on God's word. Many believers today are refusing to go through the process of discipleship where you get anchored on God's word. Many people are just playing around, fooling around their spiritual life. Not anchored, not centered. So when issues come, boom, they're out of their marriage. When issues come, boom, they shut down that business. When issues come, boom, they move on to something else. When issues come, boom, they've left the church. Not being centered. The absolutes of the scriptures. The written word of God. Second Timothy 3 and 16. All scriptures are given by an inspiration of God. They're profitable for direction, for instruction, for doctrine, for reproof. That the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto good works. That's what the scriptures do to us. Yeah. Pull, 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 pull back my, my framework. Quickly. Yeah. That's what the scriptures do when you allow it to be you allow yourself to be centered. So we have absolutes of the scripture. We have interpretations and deductions. How do that come? Interpretations are in the realm of revelation. Yeah, the Holy Spirit revealing things to you, interpreting scriptures to you. You are listening to a message like this. You get a direction, an interpretation. Deductions and all that comes from when we sit in small groups. When you are your prayer partner, sit down. And you finish praying and you're analyzing things. And by the Spirit of God, the wisdom is coming to you. We sit in small groups and, in, you know, a connect group. And we, we, we divide the Word of God. We discuss. And at the end of the day, we come to terms with the reality. And everybody's going home and saying, this is how to run your marriage. This is how to run your spiritual life. This is this. Those are deductions by the Spirit. These three concentric circles speaks to the sphere of of revelational living. Outside of this, we have reactive living. People are just reacting. Yeah. This is how other, uh, most people live outside of the circles. Personal preferences. Ladies and gentlemen, your preference may be that uh, maybe it should be raining outside now. We just want to feel, you know, we're in Lagos, Nigeria, but you want to feel like you're in, in, in Quebec, that it should be snowing outside so that you can feel. That's your personal preference, but wake up and smell the coffee. This is Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah, it's soon going to be sunny outside. There's no snow. That's the real thing. Many at times in life, people see, people, you know, play around their personal preferences much more than what life is demanding. That's childishness. Yeah, that's childish living. And a lot of the time, people over glorify their personal preference. Singles, hear me out. You have your personal preference. Uh, but you want to marry? Sometimes you have to balance things out. Yeah. It may not be unrepresented around your personal preference. You know, these days of you want to order a car, you load it with everything. You, know, you can go online and say, give me three headlamps instead of two. Uh, give me, you know, 16 airbags. And all. You know how, especially guys, uh -huh, when you're ordering a brand new car, that's the way some people want to order spouse. Yeah. Give me, you know, 
load the front like this, load the side like this. You know, any, any, as in, sometimes you, you counsel singles, the kind of things coming out of their mouth, you shake your head. Yeah, I've, I've counseled somebody before who wanted to get married and was telling me that, uh, uh, you know, pastor, any lady that I want to marry also has straight, straight legs, you know, and I was like, straight legs? As in, I, 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 I asked him again to explain himself, you know, I want a lady that's tall with straight legs, you know, so that when she's wearing something that's a bit short, you can see the legs. And uh, oh. I was looking at him, I said, oh. When you guys do marriage, you will not remember straight legs. <laughs> we just be asking God, God, give me peace. Give me peace. I need peace. Peace. <laughs> So people, see how people live? Living by feelings, by cultural norms, subjective opinions, popular culture, personal preferences. In that realm, it's all emotional. Fog. Just living through the next preference, the next popular opinion, the next this and that. Not centered or anchored. Jesus lived by conviction, resolute, absolute conviction on the word of God. Lived completely dependent on the word of God. Luke 22 and verse 42, at the Garden of Gethsemane, he was experiencing extreme emotions again. He said, my, I, I am, uh, my heart is broken and all that. Jesus was telling his disciples. And then he said, let's pray. Let's get back into the, our absolutes. And when they prayed, he prayed a prayer of consecration. Lord, if it is possible, Luke 22 and 42, if it is possible, let this cup, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. He said, nonetheless, not my will, but yours be done. It's not my personal preference. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to be in the center of God's will. That's the prayer of Jesus. What kind of prayer are you praying today? What kind of prayer are you praying today? You pray in prayers born out of being centered? Or are you praying prayers that are born out of what Paul said, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss to consume it upon your own laws. Because you are asking based on your either cultural norms or personal preferences. Not the absolute will of God. It's time to live in a zone of revelation. Not a zone of reaction. Zone of Revelation is where you are submitted to the Holy Spirit, to live by the Spirit, to live by the Spirit. Let's so wrap this up today. Can you put my, my next slide, and that will be the last for today. How to gain mastery of emotions. This is just to recap everything that I've said. Determine who is in control, your emotions or God's word. Your feelings will change, but the word of God will not change. Some people's feelings are as capricious as the British weather, always changing, vacillating. Yeah, you're happy in the morning, you're not happy in the evening, but the word of God remains the same. I will, I will, I will, I will anchor my life on the word of God rather than anchoring it on my feelings. Yeah, that's how we get mastery. Ground your faith in the power and ability and capability of God and not on human systems. So, this is what I mean. When I engage human systems, I engage by faith in God. How do I mean? I want to invest money. I'll do my due diligence, but God is the one that preserves my lot. So as I release that investment, I'm trusting in God, not in the company or the individual. Do I do my due diligence, but I'll still trust in God. I engage the human system of health, for instance, and allow science to prevail. My faith is not in the drug or injection, even if I take the drug. My faith is in God who heals. It's Jehovah Rapha. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. Live a surrendered life anchored on absolute interpretations and deductions. Not personal preferences, not feelings, not all those things, only. Because that's a way that seems right to a man. But the hand thereof is a way of destruction. And lastly, cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah.
Cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And how, how do you do that? Let me just leave you with one scripture and we pray. How do you do that? How do you cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit? First Thessalonians 5, verse 14 down to 18. And also you can read Galatians 5. Uh, which one should we? I, I, I'll give you both. <laughs> but we'll read one because of time. Galatians 5, you can read from verse 15, 16 down to 22. It just explains how, give me Galatians 5. Uh, and, and, yeah, Galatians 5, quickly. Verse 15 or 16, quickly, quickly, quickly. Galatians 5, 15 or 16. It says, but, yeah, if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Look at verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh lost against the spirit, and it's talking about this emotional display and everything just coming together. The spirit against the flesh, and they're contrary to one another, so they do not, I mean, so, so you, do not, you do not the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, verse 18 says, you, will, uh, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are all this emotional display. Adultery, fornication, is emotional display. Moved by chemicals and what you see. And you just want to go after, you know, somebody else. <laughs> Uncleanliness, lewdness, is lack of emotional control that leads to sin. Idolatry, sorcery, all these idolatry, sorcery, they come from emotional, uh, you know, uh, display of wanting to be important or needing more power. If you allow the Holy Spirit to give you humility, you will not look for power in the wrong places. Because we live in a time and age where even young people are joining a cult, joining fraternities, just to be able to, you know, have power. Meanwhile, the, the, the power is in the Word of God. Absolute power. The, the highest level of authority in the world today. Yeah. Demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus. Why do I need to join the cult? To fraternize with demons when I can fraternize with the Holy Ghost. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. Yeah. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in the heavens, under the heavens. So why do I need to? Because yeah. I, still, I still met somebody, a young person, not too long ago, who just joined a fraternity. And I was just wondering, are you okay? <laughs> what power are you looking for? Yeah. A young person who, who is supposed to be a Christian. So I'm not telling you something that's unfounded. Not everybody you see out there running after courts are not people who came from a Christian background. Some of them born and bred in church. But because of their feelings and the fact that they want to feel more powerful. <laughs> and you know, the scripture lists all those things. But in verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit. Can you give me that in New Living Translation? Quickly. New Living Translation. New Living Translation, verse 22. Quickly, quickly. New Living Translation. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, good, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There's no law against these things. All that list of what we call the fruit of the Spirit is actually mostly positive emotions that the Holy Spirit produces in us. This is how we display Christ in the real world, and people are wondering, with everything that's happening in our world, in this office, how come you are always patient, you are self-controlled, you are full of joy, you don't fight anybody, with everything that's happening here, where this office has become dog-eat-dog, -dog, but you are calm. That's how you attract people to you. They want to know what's going on in your life. They think you know something that they don't know. Then you let them know what you know. It is written. Are you still with me today? It is written. It is written. It is written. When everybody is cheating on their spouses and they're talking about it and you're calm, you're there. And they're asking you, are you not? And you say, no. Yeah. But we hear that your wife travels a lot or your husband is not always around. Uh, no, but it's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, whenever he's around, we're okay. <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I can control myself. Yeah. Because we also live in a day where many people have their spouses abroad. And the spouses are, you know, are running rampant. Yeah. When people are keeping their spouses abroad under the name of 
uh, they need a better life. And Jaffa syndrome. And then you are here roaming around like evil spirit, just, just you know, <laughs> destroying people's life all over the place. And you, you keep your own people somewhere. Yeah. And some of us have them, uh, such people are not in church this morning. I know. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Some of us have some people, such people as friends. We need to talk to them. It is not wisdom, it is foolishness. It is lack of emotional control. That's a child, emotionally. I don't care how much money you have. If you cannot control your emotions, you are still a child. Yeah. You are still a child. You are still a child. You are still a child. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 11, Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I reasoned as a child. I understood as a child. When I became mature, I put away childish things. Come to challenge somebody today. If you go through the frameworks that are presented, you go and meditate on those things, listen to this message over and again, you will see a reason to make a shift emotionally. Yeah. God will help you to be anchored and centered, even in different seasons of life. Paul said, I've learned to abound and to be abased. I know how to behave when I have extreme emotions, when I'm, uh, all my needs are met and when all my needs are not met. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me by his spirit. Lift your two hands to Jesus this morning and just bless his name. Bless his name. And somebody you are asking God today, Lord, strengthen me in my innermost being. Strengthen me in my innermost being. If you want to stand on your feet, you can stand. If you want to stand, you can stand. Uh, this is a time to pray from your heart. Lord, I want to be centered. Give me, give me grace to be focused on the absolutes. I don't want my destiny to run rampant. I don't want to miss out on destiny matters. Will somebody pray this morning, Lord, help me to escape the Esau syndrome. Help me to escape the Esau syndrome. Help me to escape the Esau syndrome. I don't want to be an Esau. I want to be an Abraham. I want to be a child of God that is centered on God's word. I wanted to pray. Pray to God this morning. Pray to God this morning. Everyone online, pray to God this morning. Pray to God this morning. God wants to do something new in your life this season. And it starts with you allowing the Holy Spirit to help you gain mastery of your emotions. It starts with you plugging yourself into systems where you can gain mastery of your emotions. Yeah. Somebody needs to pray this morning. Lord, help me to come out of that network, out of that friendship. That friendship that makes me emotionally weak. Yeah, some people belong to, you know, friendships and networks where they dismantle you emotionally. They make, they, you know, you, you, you finish, you know, hanging out and you, you become so vulnerable emotionally because of everything that they're putting into your head. Receive courage this morning to step out of such, such, such relationships. Set, Step out of such network. Step into what God is calling you into. Somebody needs to receive courage to become, you know, uh, uh, more, more focused on the work of God. Join a connect group. Join a, uh, a, a unity church. Get into systems and networks that will strengthen you emotionally. Speak to God this morning. Speak to God this morning. There's courage. Courage to turn around. Courage not to keep living like an emotional child. The Holy Spirit wants to infuse your heart with grace, with strength, and with his power. And I needed to talk to him this morning. Talk to him this morning. Will somebody commit the next critical decisions of your life into the hands of God? I wanted to speak to him right now. All the decisions are ahead of you in the next quarter of this year, the next few months of this year. Will you commit them into the hands of God? I say, Father, guide my heart by your spirit. I don't want to make my decisions based on emotions only. Guide my heart by your spirit. Guide my heart. Will you pray this morning? Will you pray this morning? Will you pray this morning that God will guide your, guide your heart by his spirit? That you will not make emotional decisions that will lead to a dead end this year. That the Holy Spirit will guide your decisions. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit will guide your steps. There are many people who will make critical life-changing decisions this year. It must not be made emotionally. It must not be made emotionally. Will you pray this morning? Jesus said, pray that you enter not into temptation. When you pray ahead of time, when the temptation comes, you have the strength to overcome the temptation. Lift your voice this morning and pray. Pray, pray, pray for strength. Pray for grace. Pray for strength and pray for grace. Thank you, everlasting Father. 
Thank you, everlasting Father. Father, we bless your name. Lastly today, I just want somebody to pray. Somebody who knows that a particular emotion has been holding sway over your life. For somebody here, it can be shame. For some other person here, it can be fear. For some other person here, it's excessive anger, ungodly anger. For some other person here, it may just be, you know, self-doubt that is almost leading to depression. I know you may have gone through one or two things that led into those extreme emotions, but the Holy Spirit is here. It still heals. It still delivers. And I also want to say this to somebody here this morning. After this service, don't look at the counseling lines and look away. The least you can do, if you know you need further assistance, is to place a call. It's to place a call. We have trained counselors here. If you go on any of our social media handles, you see it there. Go on our website, you see it there. Place a call. Let somebody talk to you. Some people need, need therapy. You know, just to be able to process some things and move past them so that they don't keep holding you down. Lift your two hands to Jesus this morning and speak concerning that particular emotion, that negative emotion that you may be dealing with and break his hold over your mind, over your life right now. Somebody is praying right now. Father, I break the hold of anger over my life in the name of Jesus. Somebody, you are speaking over that, that, that shame that came out of an experience that you are still feeling shame about and it's holding you back. I want you to pray against it right now. The Bible says hope does not disappoint for the love of God shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Our shame will not, will not hold you back. In the name of Jesus, somebody stand against that spirit of fear. Fear, fear of failure. That fear that's holding you back uh, from being able to step in into another relationship or step in into that business. That fear of the past failure. I want it to break its hold over your mind right now. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, as we yield our hearts and our minds to you, we ask that you sweep over this congregation, over everyone watching online. We ask that you empower our mind, empower our spirits to break loose from the hold of negative emotions. We thank you, everlasting Father, and we praise your name. We praise your name. Somebody wave your hands to him and just bless him. Wave your hands to him and bless him. Lord, we honor you today and we bless your name. We give you glory and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you praise. Wave your two hands to him and just bless him. Thank you, Father. Lord, we honor you today. We thank you as the God of all flesh, our strengthener, our encourager, our inspiration, the glory and the lift up of our heads. For every head that is bowed emotionally, Lord, we ask for a lifting in the name of Jesus. You are the one who restores our soul. We ask that you restore somebody emotionally in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, you said the anointing was given. Christ came to comfort those who mourn in Zion, to give to them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We break the hold of the spirit of heaviness. We destroy the spirit of mourning this morning. We decree an end to mourning, an end to heaviness. In the name of Jesus, we receive over everyone's life fresh grace, fresh oil. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Everyone joining online, we pray the same grace over you today. As we go into this new week, enjoy the garment of praise. The hold of heaviness is broken over your life. We receive for you beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for money. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We give you glory and we give you praise. I have this word for somebody here. As you step into this new week, God said rejoice, sing. Rejoice, sing. Rejoice, sing. Rejoice and sing. Rejoice and sing. I want you to meditate on Isaiah 54 from verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 54 verse 1 says, Sing, O Barry, you who have not born. 
It's a breakout into singing. That's a word for somebody here. Put that scripture on the screen for me quickly. That's a word for somebody here. I speak to you by the Spirit. So go into this new week. You need to sing. The barrenness notwithstanding. We may be going through a stream of any deprivation. Barrenness just speak of deprivation. Not having something that is so important to have and is sinking you emotionally, sinking you to negative emotions. God said the antidote for it this week for you. As you step into the end of this month, is to sing, 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 sing. Break forth into singing. Cry aloud. That is what leads to your breakthrough this season. Somebody has to sing, the spirit of heaviness will lift over your life. That's what I see in my spirit. There's a lifting of the spirit of heaviness. Somebody here, that morning will lift over your life. But the key to it as you go into this week, right from today, is to sing. Intermittently breaking into singing. Any song that the Holy Spirit brings into your heart, that's a soul lifting song. Lift it to God. Wake up tomorrow morning. Lift a song to Jehovah. As you go to work, lift a song. Control the atmosphere around your life. That spirit of heaviness. Somebody here who has even been treated for depression. I speak over you today. This week, as you obey the word of the Lord and sing, that depression will be a thing of the past. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Somebody bless today. Put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're blessed, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. You may please have your sake. Have your sake. Before we bring the service to an end, whether you are online or right here in the room, can I ask for a minute of your time as I pray for some people here who may want to make a decision today uh, to, to follow Jesus, a decision to rededicate their life to Jesus. If you're right in the room, can I ask that you bow down your head just for a minute? Just bow down your head for a minute. If you're online, I need you to listen to me. If you're making a decision for Jesus, you know that you need Christ in your life. You know that if Jesus should come right now, in your heart of heart, you cannot say, I'm a child of God. You can't run after him. You, you, you can't say, uh, 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 I'm, I'm in your family. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Or somebody who made a decision before, but even based on the sharing of this morning, you know something has cut you off from God. And you want to come back to God. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I also want to pray for you. If you are right in the room, can I ask that you lift your right hand above your head and I'll say a prayer with you. If you are right in this room right now, if you are online, can you go to the comment or the chat and let us know. I'm giving my life to Christ, or I'm rededicating my life to Christ. We'd love to pray for you as well. We'd love to send a link in there for you to be able to connect with us. But if you're right in the room, wherever you're sitting in this room, can I ask that you lift your right hand above your head. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus, or I want to give my life to Jesus. I don't want you to second-guess yourself. It's just a simple prayer. It's just a simple prayer. There's no point doubting in your heart. And you come into a powerful service like this and walk away still in doubt. So if you're not sure, if you're not sure that Christ is in your heart, if you're not sure if a condemnation and guilt is still plaguing your heart, I want you to lift your right hand right now. It's a prayer of release. God will come into your life and you'll never be the same again. Just lift your right hand to Jesus. I'm surrendering my life to you. I'm submitting my life to you completely and absolutely from this moment forward. Whether you're at the back or you're in front, you can say this prayer with me right now and God will start something new in your life. God will start something new in your life. If you're lifting your hand, I want you to lift it well. I just want to, to know that you're praying with me. Glory be to God. I can't see everybody, uh, but if there's anyone online or in, in, in person here who is saying this prayer with me, I, I, I want you to just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today, and I ask that you forgive me my sins. Say today, I receive you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Come into my heart and fill my heart with your spirit. I accept your sacrifice on the cross as a payment for my sin. And I submit my life to you completely and totally from today. Thank you for accepting me just the way I am. I declare that I'm now born again. I'm a child of God. I will live, live the rest of my life to honor God and to serve Jesus. In Jesus' name. Uh, our ministers will beckon on you if you're in the room. Please, I want you to oblige.